Good evening and welcome to day three here of the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. What a meet it's been so far and we're only going into day three of the evening session of the semi-finals and those all important finals. Now of course we're giving you live updates here on the stream so make sure that you stay tuned as much as possible because this right here right now is where you're going to get all the best information. Now speaking of the best I have the best and the most knowledgeable person sat right next to me who's done a great job so far. It's a lovely Kerry Ann Payne Olympic silver medalist. It never grows old <laughs> saying that, does it, Kerry Ann? So, Kerry Ann, welcoming you every day because you are, of course, here to give us your expert knowledge behind the scenes as well because you've got all the information that we need to know, haven't you? Yeah, well, a lot of the people that I'm speaking about today are my friends and people that I've swam with, have trained with, and um, people that I've just been to see, you know, just kind of keeping friendly. It's, it's quite a small um, community, really. So, yeah, we're all really close and it's nice to be here and still be part of it even though I'm not racing. It's great to have it. And is it kind of quite nice not to be racing? To have a, a bit of time to sit back and actually watch your friends compete? <laughs> yeah, it is really nice, I must admit, not, not racing at the moment. But I do kind of feel every now and then like I really want to dive in, I really want to get in, I really want to get part of it. Because you've had a couple of swims in uh, the afternoons here this so far this week, haven't you? <laughs> We've had a few swims, but they've not probably been as far as they should have been at the moment. <laughs> but, you know, I'm still training, still getting involved, but I do kind of wish a little bit I was racing. Well, speaking of the racing, obviously we've had the 13 nomination times so far of this meet and like I said earlier we're only into day three. Yeah well the nominations are broken down into, into individual athletes so we've had six individual athletes selected and then six people on the, the two different relay teams and the 13th is James Guy who is the one that is the other one doing that but we actually had a little chat about why it's so complicated. So here we are discussing the selection process for the English team for the Commonwealth Games 2014. Now, Kerry ann it's quite a complex process, isn't it? Yes, so there's a maximum of 36 athletes that can be selected on the team. And it's not a qualification time, but it's more a nomination process. So how can our swimmers be selected or nominated? So there are these nomination times and athletes will re really be wanting to go underneath that time, as far into that time as they possibly can, but we'll not find out if if anybody's made the team until next Wednesday. Okay, so we have a swimmer this evening, for example, gold medal, has a great swim, has a great time. They won't then find out if they've been nominated until Wednesday next week. Yeah, and they might not even make the team. So the athletes will be judged on how high they are on the FINA ranking system. So if an athlete isn't high enough up on that ranking system, but they win the event, they might not be selected. Okay, so it's, it's quite complex, it's quite difficult. So remind me again, how many swimmers can be nominated? So there's a maximum of 36 athletes that can be nominated. And how can they be nominated? And they'll be nominated on how high they ranked on the FINA ranking system. And they find out, of course, on Wednesday of next week. Now, don't forget, you can get all live up-to-date action here on the live stream as we bring it all for you for the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. So, of course, you're watching at home and you want to be involved. Well, that's understandable for such a great event. So, Kerry ann how can people send us a message or ask you a question or just let us know where you are, what you're doing on this incredible Saturday night? Yeah, well, if you um, use the British Swimming hashtag, which is at British Swimming, and uh, we'll use the competition hashtag, which is hashtag BGSC14, to, for all of your questions or where you are, what you're doing, uh, and how you're doing it. Definitely. <laughs> let us know. Any questions uh, we've, we've had... A bit of a question and answer session for you this week so if, any, if you've got any questions for Kerry ann then fire away and Kerry ann will answer as many as possible so up for the action now Kerry ann what have we got to look forward to tonight because there's a lot of events yeah but a lot of good events as well yes yeah, so we've got a pretty packed session tonight actually so we're going to start off with the um with the men's 200 meter the junior men's 200 meter butterfly final and then we've got the junior women's 50 meter freestyle final which will be a really quick race the junior men's 200 breaststroke final and then we're into the senior finals which is the men's 200 meter butterfly final where we have michael gunning who did a brilliant swim this morning to be ranked first for that the women's 50 free freestyle final where we have birthday girl francesca holsell trying to win her title for that the men's s14 200 freestyle final straight after that then we're into the women's 200 
breaststroke final where it will be the battle of Molly and Sophie. Straight then into the men's 50 metre backstroke semi-finals where Liam Tancock and Chris Walker Heaven will all be trying to win that. Then we have the women's 50 metre, sorry, the second women's 50 metre semi-final. And then we have the men's 100 freestyle semi-final which is the battle of the big dogs. We have Adam Brown swimming in that. He's going to be against James Disney May and he's going to be against all the other boys trying to fight out for that relay spots. Then we have the women's 100 metre backstroke final, then into the men's 100 metre breaststroke final where we'll have James, Adam, sorry, we'll have Adam Peaty trying to go for that British record in the 100 breaststroke. And then we're right into the junior women's 100 metre backstroke final and the junior men's 100 metre breaststroke final to finish the evening off. Well, that sounds about quite enough, uh, <laughs> quite enough for this evening. So very excited about that. Now let's hear from our commentator, Bob Ballard, on what he thinks is going to happen this evening. Heats on the third day of the British Gas Swimming Championships at Hall Cross started with the men's 200 metres butterfly. Roberto Pavoni returning after setting a new English record in the 400 metres individual medley, but he was not the fastest in the four length fly. After clocking a time of 159.22 in heat number five, that was better by Stockport Metro's Michael Gunning going sub two minutes for the first time. All of the eight qualifiers in the competition went sub 2.01. The women's 200 metres breaststroke is an event that needs to move on in Britain and Molly Renshaw hopes to be at the vanguard of that. After a disappointing 2013, 2014 has started in positive fashion with a decent 2.27.27 in Heat 5. Renshaw, who came so close to making the 2012 Olympic team, swam the fastest time by over a second and a half. Hannah Miley was second quickest in the field. We saw them go head-to-head -head in the final of the 100 metres backstroke, but Liam Tancock and Chris Walker-Heaven were kept apart in the heat of the 50. Tancock doing a 25.79, but the bar swimmer a quarter of a second quicker than the British record holder at the end. Aiming to put the disappointment of finishing third in the 100 butterfly final behind her, Fran Halsall was in a mood to race this morning in the 50, and race she did with the third fastest time in the world this year. 25.97, a third of a second shy of her best time. Fancy that will be challenged later on tonight. Amy Smith did a new personal best of 26.41. On to the land of the giants, the 100 metres freestyle. The two American-based Englishmen, James Disney May and Adam Brown, went head-to-head -head in the final heat. There was only a small margin to separate them at the end, 49.79 compared with 49.92. But they were usurped by Plymouth's Ben Proud. He went close to his personal best time in the previous heat, clocking 49.54, 48.48 being his fastest time ever. So we know that Ross Davenport is off competing in the London Marathon tomorrow morning. So to give you commentary this evening, along with our expert Bob Ballard, we have the lovely Joanne Jackson. So let's kick off this evening of day three of the semi-finals and finals for the junior men's 200 metres butterfly final. Welcome to Beauty and the Beast in the commentary box. As we start our way through day three and night three here in Glasgow, starting with the junior men's 200 metres butterfly final. Here come the athletes involved, James Ellison of Bracknell and Wokingham in one. Carl Chisholm in eight for Borough Kirk Lees. Craig Bowman for Carnegie will be in lane two. Callum Nordship of Ellesmere College in lane seven. Coming in in uh, this order, eight one. 7-2-6-3, and in the centre lane, fastest and a new personal best for him this morning, Kevin Wallbank of DaVencio, 204 is his personal best, and of course a season's best for him as well. So the 200 Butterfly, as we established earlier in the day, if you were listening and watching our coverage, was an event that Joanne Jackson started her swimming career with. It was. I used to love the 200 Butterfly. That was my first European junior event, and that was what I won my first gold medal in at the national championship. So it's a great...
great event. That's what put me into the 400 and 800 freestyle. So I'm really looking forward to watching these boys here. It is such a tough event. They've got to get the pace right. And if they can get it right, they're going to set some great times. And what are the attributes you need to be a 200 flyer? You need to have done a lot of training leading into it. You know, it's a distance event for the fly and they need to have a good strong back 100 to set a good time. So they line up on the screen, just disappeared. James Ellison of Bracknell. Two is Craig Bauman of Carnegie. Oh, Rashenko of Coventry in three. Kevin Wallbank of DaVincio in four. Benjamin Carey of Salford in five. Luke Gunning of Beckenham in six. Seven, Callum Notcher of Ellesmere. And eight is Kyle Chisholm of Borough of Kirklees. Four lengths of this tall cross ball. Now, who's going to manage to improve upon the times they set this morning? Who's going to be emerging as victorious? Certainly the fastest of the eight going into this is Kevin Warback, who's had a very good start for DeVencio in lane number four. Yeah, and also Craig Bowen in lane two had a really good start there he's looking nice and comfortable on that first 50 and they're turning there in a 27.1 so they've started off really well on that first 50 they just need to keep that going but if you watch them they've all got really good underwater work and that'll help them to keep going through the 200. It can make such a difference in terms of tens of seconds at the end of the race it can make the difference between getting a medal or not getting a medal winning a race and coming second and I think Kevin Wallbank is a, very much aware of that from DaVincio and is uh, trying to put as much of a spur on the first 100 as he possibly can. He's got El Roshenko right alongside him at the turn. There is only seven one hundredths of a second between Kevin Wallbank in first and El Roshenko in second. Craig Bowman is in third place, but trying to go from the front. It's a very hard way to swim this. Kevin Wallbank in lane number four. Yeah, if you watch his turns, he's really good underwater and he gets away from Redensko on that. But he is tiring up a little bit. Lane three is coming back on his shoulder and he's looking really strong. He's up this stroke rate and he's coming into that wall looking great. Right. So is it going to be Kevin Wallbank in four or Earl Roshenko in three at the turn? Nothing really to choose between them. Their switch round, though, was Wallbank from Roshenko. It's now the other way around with six one hundredths of a second between. Six tenths of a second, but between Earl Roshenko and Kevin Wallbank, one and three. And look at them, four now pretty much in a line in two, three, four, and five. Yeah, Benjamin Carey seems to have come from nowhere. He's up that straight leg with 25 metres to go, and he is looking really strong and looks like he's going to take this race. City of Salford swim. Best time of 203.73. Ben Carey is going to take this and has really come out of the back from virtually nowhere. First for him, 202.88, and it is a new personal best and a victory for the man from Salford. 202.88, that winning time. Second, 203.32, Earl Roshenko and Kevin Warbank for so long the leader in the junior 200 butterfly. Has to settle for the bronze medal and third place. That was a great swim from Benjamin there. You know, he was nice and comfortable over that first 100, and he came from nowhere on that last 50, and that's a great personal best swim. And you can see him punching the water at the end, so he's really happy with that time there. But he paced that really well, and he looked really strong with 50 to go. So it wasn't Roshenko, it was a wall bank. It was Ben Carey who came through at the end, 2.02.88, and a victory for the city of Salford and the new brand spanking PB for Ben Carey. Next up, it'll be the women's 50 metres freestyle. You did 53 occasionally, <laughs> didn't you? Very, very. I remember you doing it. And a lot of swimmers will say it's a fun event. I never quite understand if it puts you through so much torture and pain, how anything can be a fun event. But you did do it occasionally. I remember you doing it. Yeah, I did 50 now and again. I always found that doing the 50 would help my 200. I did it. I was never very good at it. I didn't have the fast twitch. But, you what was know, your best time? Um, I think about 25 mid, so it wasn't That's bad. All right. yeah, it was That's all good. right for uh, 200 and 400 of it. It was all right, but you know, I trained with Fran Halsall for the last couple of years of my career, so you know, I did a lot of kind of sprint training with her as well. And I used to really enjoy getting in and do a 50, but I always felt when I got to the end, I wanted to keep going, but I had to stop. Stop, Joe. <laughs> no, that's enough. Look, we don't want any more. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's, I've got to say, 25 mids, very good. It very, very right. good. You must have been ranked about three in, in, in Britain at that point, maybe yeah. two or three. Yeah. I did an all right 100 as well. I remember in 2009, um, I could have been a part of the 4x100 
I won at Worlds. I decided not to do it because I had such a busy programme, but at Worlds Short Course as well, I also did uh, the 100 freestyle relay. So sprinting now and again, but definitely preferred the middle distance events. On a fly, free so The only thing you didn't do was breaststroke. We'll come on to that later yeah. on. But uh, what, what was it about breaststroke that you really didn't like or didn't want to do? I just couldn't get the timings right on breaststroke. Backstroke, I wasn't very good at either. So I never, ever did medley swims. And, you know, I always find with breaststrokers, there's the odd one that's good at all the strokes. But if you're a professional, a great breaststroker, you don't tend to go the other strokes. And if you're not a breaststroker, you rubbish it. And I was one of those. Your sister was quite good at IM, wasn't she, as I recall? She was all right. She was more of a freestyler. But Nicola could literally do anything when she got in the pool. She was very talented. On to the women's 50 freestyle final. This is a junior women's 50 freestyle final. Constance Dean of Maidenhead in one. Katie Matz of City of Salford in two. Murray Davis of Swim Gwynedd in three. Magdalena Sykin of City of Leeds in four. Catherine Stark of Warrender in five. Hazel Ferguson of Woking in six. Paige Fellows of Trowbridge in seven. And Emily Crane of the City of Leicester is in lane eight. Fastest in the field is Magdalena Sykin of City of Leeds to the personal best in the heats where she a figure in this one with 30 metres now, 35 metres gone. Yeah, it is the splash and dash of the pool and Hazel Ferguson in lane six is looking really strong as well. She's putting her head down and she needs to finish really strong. Magdalena Sagan's going to get it. 26.26 she does. Second place going to Hazel Ferguson of Woking and there's a lot of the Woking posse contingent down there and sorry, watching out to see how she will do. I can tell you what she's done. She's at 26.45 which is a new personal best by a quarter of a second for Hazel well done to her, well done to Magdalena Sykin as well. And third place going to Murray Davison, 26.51. PBs all over the place. Yeah, a lot of them girls there did PBs, and you can see why the smiles on their faces, they're really happy with how you did. And that's great to be here watching these girls set personal best they've got. They've been working so hard in the lead up to these championships. So to finish with a personal best, they've all got smiles on their faces, and they're really happy, which is great to see. Magdalena Sykin then, 26.26. Hazel Ferguson, 26. 4-5, Murray Davis, all personal best there. In fact, joint third with Murray Davis and Catherine Stark with the same time at 26.51. Next up, it will be the aforementioned breaststroke. The women's 200 metres breaststroke final. And there is the lineup for you. Charlotte Holmes in lane one for Sheffield. Two is Emily Wood of Oxford. Three, Megan Morrison of Leicester. Four is Jesse Foster of Aqua Sulis. Emma Chittleberg of Warrenden. In five, Leah Rugen of Grantham in six, Elizabeth Hopkins of Portsmouth in seven, and Katie Hodgson of Guildford is in lane eight. So, so technical, the breaststroke. We've talked about this before, but I think it's probably worth mentioning that you can always break down the breaststroke into 50, 100, 200. It's like three different strokes within a stroke, isn't it? There's what I call the washing machine stroke, which is the 50 meters, where you, yeah. your hands seem to be going round and round and round. The hundreds kind of, you flatten that out a bit, and then you see the kind of the way that Michael Jameson swims at 200, which is very smooth, hardly any movement. Your shoulders go up and down, but they shouldn't come out of the water. You should try and stay as streamlined as yeah. possible and as flat to the water as you can. Definitely. To be a breaststroker, you have to have really strong legs. You know, a lot of it does come from the legs, and they need to be really powerful. And you sometimes see some of the swimmers rushing it a little bit, and they're slipping the water. So they do need to keep it nice and smooth. But, you know, it's such a technical event, the breaststroke. I was absolutely rubbish at it. And it's one of those events that I think is the hardest one to get right when you're teaching children how to swim. I think the breaststroke is the one that you really struggle to get it right. So I'm really looking forward to watching this junior final, because this is the future of British women, this is what we want. We want to see them have a great swim here because these are the guys that are going to be around in 2020, 2024, hopefully bringing back medals for Team GB. I look at Michael Jameson's stroke and I think you cannot better that. It is about as inch perfect as you possibly get. So if you wanted to show a VT, if you want to show a videotape to somebody of saying, right, you want to do breaststroke, this is how to do it. Michael Jameson is the man you'd look at. Yeah, Michael Jameson has got a beautiful breaststroke. You watch him, he looks smooth in the water, he, he glides at the right time and looks really strong and he gets everything perfect and he makes it look easy even though it's really hard for him and then you look at Molly Renshaw as well who's got a lovely stroke so it'll be great to see her later on swimming the Tundra breaststroke. All right let's get on to the uh, last of the junior finals for now we have uh, another couple to come later on but this is the women's 200 meters breaststroke. Charlotte Holmes just go through the lineup for you again so well since we did. City of Sheffield in one 
Emily Wood of Oxford in two, Megan Morrison of Leicester in three, Jesse Foster, Aquasulis in four, Emma Chittleberg of Warrender in five, Leah Rugen of Grantham in six, Elizabeth Hopkins of Portsmouth in seven, and Katie Hodgson of Guildford in lane number eight. Pretty passive in the first 50, not too much happens, just establishing their way through in the race. And things will then start to pick up a little bit as the uh, stroke rate changes as they come off the first 50. The first 50 looks to have been dominated marginally only just though by Megan Morrison in lane number three who has an advantage about half a second over Jesse Foster with Emma Chittleberg in third. Yeah Megan had a great first 50 there and we've also got Jesse Foster in lane four who's the only girl to set a personal best this morning to make it through to the final so the other girls are going to want to have a strong swim tonight to get a personal best but Emma Chittleberg in lane five she's the national 14 years A group champion so it is a strong field here we've got some national champions from their age group so they'll have swam against each other before and they're going to be wanting to fight and out for the top three positions. City of Leicester at the front in the shape of Megan Morrison. She will turn now in a time of 113.46. Second place to Emma Chittleberg of Warrender and third is Jesse Foster of Aqua Sulis. That time again at the halfway stage for Megan Morrison 113.46 and this is where they're going to start a concertina together a little bit. Lots of swimmers will come together. In fact, as we saw in the last one, maybe four possibly coming together all together we're keeping an eye on lane number five because Anna Chittleberg is having a great third 50 here and probably just edged her way into the lead yeah Megan Morrison was first at the halfway point but hopefully she didn't go out too strong a 113 is a quick first 100 for a 200 breaststroke and hopefully she won't tie up on that last 50 to go but it is Mer Megan Morrison that has taken the lead with 50 to go on a 153.62 so she's come back really strong in this final part of the 200 breaststroke barely anything between lane Lanes three and five, though, at the turn, there was only one one hundredth per second between Chittleberg and Megan Morrison. And it is lane three is trying to power her way through. And at the moment, it seems that Emma Chittleberg probably does not have a response, or does she? Maybe she's getting a second or third wind here because they're virtually together. 15 meters remaining in this race, and maybe Emma Chittleberg has got something in reserve. She's gone to the, uh, the depths of her soul and the depths of her resources, and she's going to take this race for Warren de Bars. 233.22 for Emma Chittleberg and that is a new personal best for her. Previously 233.35 has been better today. Second place for Megan Morrison and third place going as we're waiting for the board to revolve to Leah Rugen in 235.34. Here's the finish. Yeah, that's Emma's second PB of the day which is great to see. Fantastic swim, 233. So she stayed, she stayed nice and strong over the first two but brought it back really well. So Chittleberg, 233.22 PB, Megan Morrison in second, and Leah Rugen in third place. Now I'm joined here by David Carey, three times Olympian. David, welcome yeah, to the yeah. British Swimming Championships. What do you think to the swimming so far? Because we're going to have a chat about the, the junior swimming in particular, aren't we? Yes, I've been really impressed with uh, all the incredible swims that have been happening here. And of course, it's, it's for a big occasion. The, the Commonwealth Games is just on the horizon and you can see all the, the youngsters being really kind of brought up to the occasion. It's fantastic to see all these kids coming along and, and uh, performing so well just seen three races and just been so impressed with the, the level of technique, the level of quality of swimming that's been going on and uh, it's really inspiring to see and, and certainly in my role at uh, in Scottish Swimming, um, fortunate to have uh, had the, taken the opportunity to, to be a, one of the directors at Scottish Swimming. I've, I've been there for, for not very long but it's uh, my real passion is to, to really kind of understand what it takes to be a world-class swimmer and, and in Scotland we seem to be really good at it and, and it's really kind of understanding what is it that it takes to, to really kind of help those junior swimmers make that leap to be a truly world-class swimmer. Because that's interesting you say that because we do talk about the drop-off you know we've got great juniors coming through but we want to keep them coming through to great seniors don't we yeah. so how do, how do you go about that because it's, it's a difficult thing to, to do isn't it? It really is um, but there's a huge amount of research that goes on whether it's through UK sport or, or various other bodies to really understand what it takes to be 
a true performer. And uh, there's loads of different things that, that we're looking at at the moment. But one of the key things is it's actually a real kind of cross um, ability to cross train, the ability to do lots of different sports when they're younger. And I, I have a real fear that, that so many kids are being pushed into swimming so early that at the age of you know, 12, 13, 14, they're, they're already expected to, to be doing eight, nine, 10 sessions a week, which I really didn't do until I was about 24 years eight of age. Right. So it's really kind of understanding what it is that it takes to, to be a world-class swimmer and then doing it on purpose and doing it consistently so we can see more people like Michael Jameson and Hannah Miley, Robbie Rennick and all these kids coming through. It's great that you're, you're reeling off all these names, these Scottish names as well. I know, it's so exciting. I mean, we're really in this kind of you know, golden period of, of Scottish swimming, I believe. We've got people like Ross Murdoch, it's, it's really kind of blowing, blowing the, uh, the rest of the world away. We've got Michael Jameson, obviously. We've got people coming through like Craig McNally, who uh, qualified, obviously, last week at the Scottish Championship. So, so much going on. It's really lots, exciting. Lots and lots of names coming through. Listen, David, thank you very much for joining us. And we'll let your wife get back on the seat yes. now. She's doing a good job, isn't she? So we move on now to the men's 200 metres butterfly final. Very much looking forward to this. We'll give you a quick look at the uh, one to eight who are going to be involved in the 200 metres butterfly final. This is who you're going to see. Lewis Smith of the University of Sterling in one, Luke Howdle in two, Jay Lelliot in three. Fastest qualifier from this morning, Michael Gunning in four. That surprised us all. He went sub two minutes for the first time. Roberto Pavoni in five. Joe Roebuck expecting him to go considerably quicker tonight in six. Cameron Brody in seven. Matt Johnson of Bath in lane number eight. What's you feel about this, Joe? Because uh, Michael Gunning certainly was on our radar this morning. Yeah, Michael Gunning had a great swim this morning, the first time under two minutes, so that was a massive achievement for him. But for me, it's Roberto Pavoni that I think is going to take this 200 butterfly. The way he swam his 400 medley the other night to get an English record was absolutely fantastic, and also that nomination for the 400 medley. He is swimming really well and looks so strong in that 400, so he is the one to watch in this 200 fly for me tonight. Well, the world times are around about 156 at the moment. There's a 154 for Chad Leclerc and a 154 from Dalia Sato. So we need to find uh, a few Brits who can get around the 156, 157 mark if possible. So they would be a good time to do it. Let's see what happens after the first 50. Joe Roebuck is setting the pace. 26.08 for him. Cameron Brody in second. There is Roberto Pavoni and Michael Gunning at the moment is just keeping his powder dry, or as maybe this morning's exertion has taken a bit out of him. Yeah, Joe had a great start there, but his personal best is a 155.94. So he has got this time in him, but he didn't have a great year last year. He was really disappointed with how he swam. So I hope he's come here to try and prove everyone wrong and to have a great swim. And he is looking really strong in the first 100, turning in a 55.71. But we saw him this morning fade on that last 25 metres. So hopefully he can carry on swimming strong and finish well. Well, you know that Joe Roebuck is swimming pretty well when he's doing a Barnes-Wallace, when he's bouncing off the top of the water, as he has been there. And at the moment, and he's still got the advantage, but it's not as big an advantage as it was at the 100. The rest are coming back to him now. Roberto Pavoni on one side. Michael Gunning, unfortunately, is finding the pace a little bit too strong tonight. This morning's time, just a little bit too strong, it would seem, for him. But it is Joe Roebuck who leads by about a third of a second from Roberto Pavoni at the last 50 split. Cameron Brody is in third place. Michael Gunning now into fourth. And Joseph Roebuck just had a great turn there. He got off the wall, had a really good underwater and pulled away from Roberto. But, you know, Roberto is coming back on his shoulder and he's putting his head down and trying to get past Joe Roebuck. Doesn't want to get beaten here, Robbie, does he? And it's Joe Roebuck and Robbie's going to get this, I think. Robbie and Joe and Robbie's going to get it surely on the touch. Pavoni does get it. 157.2 for Pavoni. Never in the lead until that very final stroke. Joe Roebuck has to take second best by eight one hundredth of a second. Third place going to Cameron Brody and Matt Johnson in fourth. So we had seven of the eight go sub two minutes and uh, Michael Gunning does 159.86 to back up his uh, first two sub two minutes swim this morning. What a finish by Pavoni. Yeah, what a fantastic swim. It was literally down to the fingernail. It was down to the touch and you know it was really exciting for us to watch here. And, you know, I didn't even see Cameron Brody coming through but for him to go 157.96 was a great swim for him and it was all on the finish for those three boys.
Cameron Brody about half a second outside the Scottish record, which is currently held by Ian McMillan. Roberto Bavoni, 157.20 and 157.28 for Joe Roebuck. Cameron Brody in third, 157.96. Great start for all three. Not quite the qualification or nomination time for Roberto Pavoni, but nonetheless, that was a cracking race and well done to Pav for a second title in consecutive nights. We'll hear from him in just a few moments' time. Uh, it's good to see that because so we talk about the depth in the uh, 400 IM. We need a bit more on the turn of the No Michael Rock now, of course. Michael's retired, so we're looking kind of for the, a replacement and the next generation. We'll talk about that in a few moments' time. Let's hear, though, from the winner, Roberto Pavoni. is now here with Jody. Roberto, what a final 50 metres. You took it right down to the wire. You must be absolutely exhausted. How was that? Yeah, I'm really happy to have won. It's the first time I've won 200 Butterfly at British Champs, so over the moon with that. A bit disappointed with the time, to be honest. I did a good swim yesterday, and I was hoping to go a bit quicker tonight, but the win is a win, so... It is a very, very tough time, that Team England nomination time of 1.55. You've got the 200 IM coming up later in the week. Do you think that nomination time is a bit more achievable? Yeah, well, I was hoping to do it tonight as well, so that's why I'm a bit disappointed with the time. But um, 200 IM, I should be able to get hopefully close to the time as my PB, so looking forward to that on Tuesday. OK, well, good luck. Thanks, Roberto. Thank you. So let's crack on with the next event, one we've talked about already for the juniors. Let's move up to the senior sphere and the 50 metres freestyle for women. This is going to be a cracker, well, potentially could be a cracker. Depends which Fran Housel we're going to see. We've seen the good and the not quite so good of Fran on the opening couple of days. She will be as determined as she ever is to do a cracking time here. And her English record is 24-1-1. That was set in Rome back in the old suit day. Probably not going to challenge that tonight, but she wants to be as quick as she can be with another race to come later on in the evening, of course. Yeah, we saw Fran last night have a really disappointing 100 fly, but we saw her back in the pool this morning for the 50 fly, and she looked like a different person. She looked great in the water, and she really wants to get this nomination time of 24.59, which is she is capable of. She is capable of doing that. And, you know, Fran loves the big occasions. You know, she goes to the World Championships, the Commonwealth Games, and always performs really well. So she needs to get that time tonight so she can concentrate on the rest of the week. Right, let's uh, give you the one to eight if we can to show you who the other seven swimmers are. We don't want to ignore them because they'll be very much in the mix. Uh, these are the ones we'll see involved in this race. Emma Wilkins in one. Amy Smith looked uh, very good in the Butterfly this morning. Hopes to improve on a freestyle tonight. Sean Harkin in three. Rebecca Guy goes in five. Lauren Quigley, who's also doing uh, the 100 backstroke later on. Jessica Lloyd in seven. And Harriet Cooper in eight. So there's a few uh, multi-swims for swimmers in this. Amy Smith will be back later on as well in the 50 flight. But there's the person we're going to concentrate on. Can Fran House will do what we expect her to do? Gets the Commonwealth Games nomination time at least and see whether she can do uh, a really quick time. She always is quick, normally in the 50. And we expect her to be leading at 25 metres, Joe. Yeah, Franz had a great start. She had a great underwater work, and that's one thing she struggled with over the years on the World Series. But that was a great start for her, and she's putting her head down, and she's miles in front of the other swimmers, and it looks like it can be a great time for Fran Halsall. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 24-5-1. That's the nomination time that she wants. That is number five in the world. In fact, she's been faster than that this year, so she still remains number four in the world. 24-3-8 for Fran and how sore was the time in Marseille. 24.51 is her time in Glasgow, but that is the time for the nomination for the England Commonwealth Games team, and she, as she always does on the 50, attacked it from the start. Yeah, that was a great swim for Fran. I'm so happy because she got that nomination time. I know how much she wanted it, and you know when Fran's happy when she touches the wall and looks up, has a massive smile on her face, and you know, she'll be so pleased that she's got that pressure off her now. She's qualified, she's got the nomination time, so she can now look for the 50 fly later and the 100 fly later on in the week. James Gibson's amongst that uh, lot. Well, he was. He's probably disappeared behind. There's the Loughborough contingent at the front, including Ian Armiger. 
And here come the results of the women's 50 freestyle. Fran Halsall, 24.51. The uh, time of 25.07 from Sean Harkin is a new personal best for her. Second personal best in a day. Amy Smith in third, 25.09. Her season's best in third place. So pretty good stuff. I think we'll hear some words of wisdom and some words of uh, exaltation now from uh, Fran Halsall, who is with Jodie as she gets the water out of her hair. We'll make it quick. Yeah, 100%. Fran, not only is it your birthday, but that's your ninth consecutive British title in this event. You must be pretty pleased with that, Sim. Yeah, it was okay. It's good to get in and just get the time and get on the team. And you've got a busy racing schedule this week, proven tonight by the fact you've got the 50 Fly Semi coming up. How do you mentally refocus for each of these races? You've just got to take each one as it comes, really. Just think one by one, time after time, get in, recover, do the next one. It seems to, it's quite hard, but I'm doing okay. Okay, well, I'll let you get off to swim down. Thanks, Fran. Thank you. Love, I love how she's so relaxed after that <laughs> swim. Yeah, happy with that. So, um, we say the name again, Roberto Pavoni. Yes. So he did have a really great 200 fly then. I mean, the time wasn't that great, but I think the way that he did the race was really good. He was behind Joe Roebuck the whole way through. Joe's time is a, you know, is a 155, so we were expecting him to go out quite fast, which is exactly what he did. But the thing about that was Joe's turns were absolutely fantastic during that whole of that race. So if you see here, now he comes in. Roberto touches just behind him, but if you see his turns, he kind of makes sure that he goes as far as he can. He goes a bit further than Roberto. And for me, imagine what Roberto could do if he had turns as great as Joe Roberto. Yeah, and if he can steal uh, a race at the end like that, I mean, the power um, from yeah. him at the finish was just incredible, wasn't it? Yeah, so he, even though he's looking the other way slightly, he'll still be able to see Joe's stroke under the water. And on the 200 bus fly, almost one of the worst places to be is in the lead, knowing that somebody is chasing you down. And, uh, you know, such a great finish at the end. He's just, he's there, he's putting his head down, and he touches. And Francesca's start, we mentioned, was incredible as well. Yeah, she just has such great starts, and that's why she's a whole second, half a second ahead of the rest of the field in that 50. Indeed. OK, well, we now move on to the S14 men's 200-metre freestyle final. And uh, we'll give you the lineup. That's your one to seven for the men's 200 meters freestyle for the S14 character category. <laughs> Dan Pepper is the British record holder. Here he goes in lane number two. Just run through that lineup for you in case you didn't catch it fully. Chris Corey goes in one for City of Oxford in two. It is Dan Pepper of Marple. New Keys, Ben Proctor in three. Thomas Hammer of Burnley, fastest qualifier this morning in four. Jack Thomas in five for Swansea. Six is Joseph Schenk of New Key. And Craig Harris of Corsham goes in lane number seven. Who's that flying in lane number five? Looks like Jack Thomas is exactly what he did this morning in the first 50. Yeah, Jack Thomas had a great first issue there, and we saw that this morning. He had a great first 150, but tied up with that last 50 to go. So. You know, hopefully he's learnt from what he did this morning. He'll have gone away, recovered for tonight, and that we're hopefully he can keep that going through the whole of the 200 because they set some great times this morning. There was quite a lot of PB, so and they, that nomination time of 202.77 is within reach with these swimmers. Dan Pepper has the British record at 201.27. He is in lane two and uh, quite a way off the base here. We're looking at three, four, and five together. Ben Proctor, Thomas Hammer, and Jack Thomas are separated by just two tenths of a second in that order. Proctor, Hammer, and Thomas at the halfway stage. Yeah, Benjamin Proctor turning 58.71 is a great first 100. And that British record of 201.27 is within their reach if they can keep that going. They're all looking really strong at the moment. They've got to pick that straight rate up. The 200 these days is a sprint for these guys, so they need to get in there, keep the legs kicking, and keep that straight rate up through that final 50. Well, it's been looking good for Jack Thomas. Not looking quite as good at the moment. He's slipping slightly behind Thomas Hammer, but he's still in 
contention is Hammer from Thomas from Proctor. 130.63, so definitely, definitely in range is that British record of Dan Pember. If they can bring it back in 30 seconds. Yeah, and Thomas Hammer has still going really strong. You know, this is where he started to tie up this morning. So he needs to put his head down and keep going. And he is pulling away from the rest of the field with 10 metres to go. But in the 202s, can he get into the 201s? A celebration record, 201.27. No, it slipped outside. That's a personal best nonetheless. So that's the second prize, if you like. Not quite the booby prize, but uh, a secondary consideration for him on this occasion. But sadly, not quite the British record. That will come in time, I'm sure, for him. 201.91, Jack Thomas in second. 203.05 and a 204.16 for Ben Proctor. Yeah, you can see here on the finish with five to go, he put his head down and he has a really hard finish, just missing that British record. He was so close, but he got that nomination time. So hopefully he can you know, go back to training, see what went wrong on that and get that British record at the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, it was in range 150. Sandy slipped out of range for him at 200. But uh, 201.91 is the best that he has ever done. So he will be absolutely thrilled with that, I'm sure. And uh, Dan Pepper knows that uh, his record is probably going to be going before much too long. It's Ben. Third place. But uh, that was inside the nomination time for the Commonwealth Games for the Paralympic swimmers who will be here back in Glasgow having their own competition, their own event next week and uh, trying to get the times that they require. Saturday afternoon in Glasgow, where would you rather be? Here in Tollcross, of course. Congratulations, Tom. We can see on your face you're absolutely delighted. How are you feeling about that swim? Really good. Brilliant. And underneath the Team England qualification time, how do you feel about representing England later this summer? Fantastic. And your personal best time of 201.91, which we saw there, were you expecting that swim coming into this meet? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks very much, Tom. Right, 200 metres breaststroke final for women coming up. Uh, let's give you a little measure of how far we have to improve in this country to get into world rankings here. 219.94 is the best time of 2014 for Marika Muller Pedersen. And the best in the Commonwealth is 222.10. Taylor McKeown at the moment. Molly Renshaw, who's the English record holder, 226.38 is the best time of the Brits this year. So the big leap down needed by the likes of Danielle Lowe, Molly Renshaw, and Hannah Mine is doing this as a bit of fun, really, the Taylor Breast. Although she used to, now she's it's one of the main events. Yeah, it's great to see Hannah in here. Obviously, her main event is the 400 medley, but it's great to see her doing a few different events. But, you know, we need to keep an eye on the likes of Lane 7 and 8. Lila, Wood, Lila Black is 13 years old in Lane 7. She's so young to make her first national final. You know, this is where the future is. To be 13 years in a senior final is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, that could be the future of the breaststroke. Well, we'll see her come on to pull deck very shortly. We're just seeing here. Here she comes right now. Layla Black, they'll be watching in the city of Leeds, cheering her on to the, the rafters, I'm sure. 221, sorry, 231, that would be great, but it's 231, 231, 22 is her time from this morning. New personal best, Amy Wilmot going in this as well. Another of our 400 IMers, and she is in lane number two. Danielle Lowe of the city of Derby, trained by Mel Marshall, who will be having kittens at the moment, thinking about Adam Beatty later on, but obviously has to consider Danielle Lowe for the time being in lane number three. Not a secondary consideration at all for her. Hannah Miley gets a big cheer from the Scottish crowd as she comes out in lane number five and Molly Renshaw of Loughborough University of whom so much is expected she has moved to Loughborough she's in the big program now and uh, lots of big things are expected of her she is the English record holder at 226.38 which was set uh, earlier on this year in Antwerp yeah, she had a great race out in Antwerp. You know, a lot of the team went out there to race, and they all raced really fast, which is great leading into this competition. But she needs to set another personal best to be able to set that time. Just saw Hannah Miley as she prepares for yet another event. I think in terms of uh, her overall structure of events, I think she's pretty much out on every single one that there is on the calendar. And if she hasn't, she will do in due course, I'm sure. 
And the Miley has uh, really adapted to the 200 breaststroke. It used to be one of her weakest strokes. It is now one of her strongest strokes, but uh, she's probably not the favorite. She certainly is not the favorite to win this. Uh, Hannah Miley, though, has gone off quite well in lane number five. Not as well, though, as Sophie Taylor has gone away. In lane number six, it's a flying start for Sophie Taylor in lane six. Yeah, Sophie's gone off really well, but we've already seen her in the 50 breaststroke this week, so she is more of a sprinter. So, you know, she'll need to take this out strong, but she needs to be careful because if she goes out too hard, she will struggle down that final hundred where Molly Rinshaw is more of a back end swimmer. So Molly just needs to keep it nice and smooth, try not to think too much about Sophie on the outside and swim her own race. Well, 32.07 is kind of what you might expect on 100 rather than yeah. 200, to be honest. So if she's going to keep this going, it's going to be a remarkable time. However, the rest are inevitably starting to come back to her now. Molly Renshaw in lane number four is now starting to make inroads on her lead. There is still a lead for Sophie Taylor of City of Leeds, probably about a body length and a half. Hannah Miley is in the mix. So too is Danielle Lowe. But at 100, it is still Sophie Taylor who splits in 109.51. That is rapid. For a, well, for a normal 100, but a 100 within a 200, that's very quick. That is a ridiculously quick time for that first 100. And if she can keep this going, it'll be a great swim. But, you know, hopefully she hasn't gone out too hard. That's the thing with a 200 breaststroke. If you try too hard down that first 100, you will struggle. But she, at the minute, she is looking really strong, and she's keeping that going. But Molly Renshaw just needs to pick up the pace and try and get on her shoulder. Boy, oh boy, if she can keep this going, we are looking at a remarkable swim here from Sophie Taylor with 50 to go. <laughs> she doesn't look to be tiring, but if she's going to tire, it's going to happen from here on in. 1.46.51 of 50 to go. We are looking at something rather spectacular. If, and it's a big if, she can keep this going. And I hope she can keep it going. We need a new 200 breaststroker in Great Britain, and if she can keep this going, it'll be a fantastic world-class swim, but Molly Renshaw isn't giving up. She's trying to get on her shoulder, and she's keeping going, and she is looking strong as well. Sophie Taylor is joined by Molly Renshaw. Taylor, Renshaw, who's going to get it? Taylor is still in the lead. She has been in the lead all the way through. If she wins this, this is a remarkable, remarkable swim. Look at this time coming up now. 2.24.46. That is incredible. Absolutely incredible, Sophie Taylor. Fantastic stuff. Wow. That puts her number four in the world. 2014. What a brilliant swim. I've, I've got a funny feeling all over me. How fantastic was that? She went out from the start. She went out and we thought she might tie up. She didn't at all. What a world-class swim. And that is exactly what we need in Great Britain at the minute. Molly Renshaw, 225.10. She's up there as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the world now for Molly Renshaw with it. 225. But two, we are now talking about what Kirsty Balfour was doing 10 years ago at 224. The uh, British record is 224.04. So she, she was wasn't. So close. Yeah. She was only three tenths of a second outside the British record. If she had got that British record, that would have definitely been my swim of the week because Kirsty's had it for so long and it'd be great to see it go but what a swim she went out she had guts and it was fat it was brilliant what a great swim that is a new english record and an english record by a long way as well let me tell you that's over two seconds inside the english record it was well it's actually two seconds inside 226 38 has become 224 46 that is it i honestly thought she was going to blow up over the last 50 i thought you are going ridiculously quickly here sophie taylor well it shows what i know it shows what she knows better than me. Molly Renshaw in second, Danielle Lowe in third, took our breath away that, and Amy Wilmot in fourth place. I hope she's got her breath back. I'm not sure I have. Let's hear what Sophie Taylor thinks about being number four in the world and the fastest time ever by an English swimmer. Here she is with Jodie. Sophie Ace. Sophie, a stunning swim from you there. You took the race out from the start, totally dominated, and underneath that Team England qualification time. Just try and put into words your thoughts right now. Um, I can't. It's absolutely amazing. I wasn't expecting like anything like this. Um, it's just amazing. I'm really, really happy. And you came off the back of a magnificent victory in the 50 yesterday, proving you've got, you have both speed and endurance. That's a pretty deadly combination. Yeah, well, I've been training hard putting the effort in and I haven't PB'd in nearly two years so it's finally paid off which is good. Ladies and gentlemen your 200 meter breaststroke British champion.
that was one of those moments where you see the first hundred and you think, surely she's she's going to step back here a little bit. But what a swim. Yeah, I, I had a sneaky feeling that she was going to do something like that. When yeah. I went to see her, she was really focused. She really wanted to make sure she had a good 50, 100 and 200. And she did that <laughs> spectacular swim. She did do that very well. Maybe she was listening to us earlier when we're saying, is the field strong enough in the women's 200 I think she was breaststroke? To Bob and she was trying to stop him yeah, from she saying was what he was saying earlier. Out there to get us. Now, speaking of performances, Kerry Ann, a few questions to ask you. The road to Rio, what's your status at the moment with swimming? So, a lot of people think that I've retired from swimming. I haven't retired from swimming. You have swimming. not. You heard have that first. She has not retired. <laughs> What I have done though this season is taken some time out of the competitive racing um, circuit. So I'm doing a few small things here and there, but still training, but not all that much. You and know. why? Why is that, Kerry Ann? Well, for me, this the road to Rio is, is a three-year road. Basically, it's a three-year process. And what that meant that me and my coaches sit down, we decided that this year was the first of the, that, that three-year cycle, and it was to take some time out to recuperate my body, recuperate my mind, just you know, step back for a little bit. I've been doing distance training since. I was 12 years old that's you know 14 years of that so taking yeah. a year out now isn't going to do me any harm in fact I'm thinking it's going to make me a better swimmer on that road to Rio so how many times a week are you training now then compared to what you were doing before yes yeah, so I was doing around about 10 sessions a week and now I'm only doing kind of four to five sessions so it's quite novel really having a lot more time on my hands <laughs> and what's your training plan going to be when you get back in the water so it will be um, a fairly steady journey back up because I want to do a couple of open water races where I'm a bit unfit to just to kind of get in the mix. And then it'll be, you know, straight back up there, Worlds 2015 and Kazan, that's the Olympic qualifiers for me for 2016 in Rio. And what's your ultimate goal at 2016 in Rio? Well, I wouldn't still be swimming if I didn't think that I could make it onto the top of the podium in Rio. It's not really something that I've ever spoken about or talked about before, but, you know, I'm I'm 26 now, I'll be 28 then, but yeah. this is what I want to do, and I, and I know that I have the ability to, to be still on the top of that podium. And that's why it's so nice to talk to you about this, Kerry-Ann, because you can just see that passion, that desire, that really comes through when you're talking about other people swimming and yourself. You know, you must be so committed to be having some time out, because, we, you know, when we speaking to David earlier, your husband, about the juniors, yeah. there's a cut-off point where people can start to maybe take a bit of time out in the teenage years, and then it's getting them back involved again, and yeah. you having some time out, but you still got that determination, haven't you? Yeah, well, it had to be a process of support. I needed support from my coach. You know, we sat down and we spoke. We had to go through British swimming as well. We needed the support from um, Bill Finesse, the head coach, and from, you know, everybody, including Chris Weiss, who is the, the performance director of swimming, and if I didn't have that support from those guys, then I wouldn't be able to do it, but they are fantastic. And actually speaking of Chris Spice, um, earlier I had a little chat with him about his role one year on from, um, from his new appointment as head coach of the, okay. sorry, as team leader. <laughs> I'm here with Chris Spice, who's the National Performance Director for British Swimming. So, Chris, it's been one year on since your appointment. How have things been going this year? Oh, really great, Kerry Ann. Um, we've had a massive changes in the department, a whole new restructuring, and uh, we've brought in a great leadership team of uh, Tim Jones, who's come from gymnastics, and Carl Cook, who's come from the LTA. So, we've brought in a really, really great team. So, I'm dead chuffed about where we're at. And what's been the biggest change that you've had to implement this season? The biggest change for me has definitely been in coaching. Um, We've tried to bring in something new and we've just recently appointed Nigel Redman into, um, to help work with our coaches to make them truly world class. And on top of that, our competition program. We are, the athletes have competed a lot, lot more leading into the trials and I think we're starting to see the benefit of that already. And it's the Commonwealth Games year. Will you be just looking at the England team or the Welsh and the Scottish team as well? No, we'll be working right across Britain. I think Bill and I, of course, uh, will be not on pool deck, so we'll, but we'll be close, uh, closely watching uh, what's happening at the home nation. So we're working with them all. It's a situation pretty normal for us. And what will you be expecting from the home nations this, this Commonwealth Games cycle? We've got our agreed targets with UK Sport across the whole program, obviously only focusing on the Olympic events. Um, but Bill and I will be working with the teams to make sure that we hit those targets come, um, come evaluation time at the end of the year. And what would be the absolute pinnacle for you at the end of the season? the end of the season, I think what we'd like to see is, is some of the youngsters really putting their hand up and, and making a mark on the world stage. And we've, we've seen a couple of them do really well already. Um, and I think this, you know, the springboard is what we're after for heading into Rio. Well, thank you very much for that. And I'm sure we're all really looking forward to seeing how the home nations get on this Commonwealth Games year. Thanks.
and what's your training plan going to be when you get back in the water? So it will be um, a fairly steady journey back up because I want to do a couple of open water races where I'm a bit unfit just to kind of get in the mix. And then it will be, you know, straight back up there, Worlds 2015. And cause, yeah, great to see him up there. He's got a really nice smile on his face, congratulating all the other boys. That's really nice to see. In his post-race interview, he, he mentioned about his time, didn't he? Have you a yeah, bit he faster? wasn't very happy with it, but, you know, he was a whole second off his time. So he's got a lot to improve on. You know, turns are certainly a start for him, I, I would imagine. Indeed, looking very, very very happy as well. So carry on, probably two, two swims tonight, a highlight for me. Yeah, so, um, you know, France swim, France with the butterfly. We can see her on the podium um, there yeah, earlier. She there. It was a great swim, you know, really fast time, but she's got a lot to do still. I think she can really knock some more time off of that. Well, that's great to hear, isn't it, at this this moment in the year. So now it's back to the racing. It's back to the semi-final for the men's 50 metres backstroke. And here's how they line up for the first of the semi-finals of the 50 metres backstroke for men. And you'll notice that at the moment there is no Liam Tancock and no Chris walker Hebman because they go in the second semi-final. Marco Lochran is the Welsh record holder, goes in four. Only a couple of PBs this morning in this. Dominic Walker in lane number eight and Andrew McGovern of Coast in five so there'll be a few other swimmers and the 16 that could compete in the semi-finals will be hoping to take a notch or two off their best times Marco Lochran has the Wales record which uh, came a little while ago 25-2-1 not sure he's in quite that kind of form here so he's shown so far but he'll certainly give it a good crack I'm sure yeah Marco didn't have a great swim last night so it'll be great to see how he does but these need to set a strong time in this first semi-final because you know the big dogs are in the second semi-final who are going to have great time so they need to put in a great performance Marco Lochran in the centre lane Andrew McGovern going well in five Lochran I think has just about got it it's a very 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 tight finish and Lochran gets there first 25.92 which actually equals the uh, Scottish record of Craig McNally uh, who gets 26.35 in fifth place second is Andrew McGovern and third is Jack Ness remember of course the top eight times from the two semi-finals will progress to the finals so no problems for Marco Lochran it would seem no problems for Andrew McGovern 25.93 is just outside the personal best he set this morning. Yeah, that semi-final were a little bit slower than the heat this morning, so, you know, they need to put that right for the final, but, you know, Marco and Andro should not have any problem with getting through to that final, both going 25 points. So, you know, the second semi-final is coming up. We've got Liam, who's a great 50 backstroker, Chris Walker, heaven, Joseph Patchen, who's also having a great meet so far, so you can't write any of these people off for the final tomorrow night. Second semi-final of the men's 50 metres backstroke, and this is where the big dogs come in. See what happens with uh, the British record holder, who's in lane number five, and the fastest qualified just this morning, Chris Walker Heaven, Joe Patching in there as well, along with Sam Horrocks and Sam Strawn in seven and eight. Three Loughborough swimmers in here. Daniel Stepton in one, Liam Tancock in five, and Sam Strawn has moved from Plymouth to Loughborough in lane number eight. There is the fastest qualifier, Chris Walker Heaven. Won the 100, would love to do the double. Can't do that until tomorrow night, of course, but wants to get one over on Liam Tancock. Head to head in the 50, this will be interesting. This really is Liam's race rather than Chris's. It is, this has always been Liam's race, but unfortunately he didn't have a great year last year, so Chris and Liam will be going head to head with Marco tomorrow evening, but they need a good performance. They're going to be fighting each other to get into that final. So nearest the camera, it is Chris Walker Heaven of Bath. And Liam Tancock of Loughborough in five. I'm sure others will feature, but uh, those are the two likely to be there at the finish in terms of position one and two. But who's going to get position one and who's going to get position two? We know that Liam Tancock has among the best starts in the world. And in fact, on the side, he probably has gained a little bit over Chris Walker Heaven, who's now claiming it back at 25. Yeah, they're all looking really strong here. It's going to be on the touch. They both look really comfortable this morning, but Chris is starting to pull away and Chris looks fantastic with five meters to go. 25.43 is Chris Walker Heaven's best time. It isn't anymore. It's 25.20, personal best for Chris Walker Heaven. 
Melbourne, the British record holder Liam Tancock has to settle for second place today, 25.59. Joe Patching in third, 25.84. And fourth for Rory Lamont in 26.24. So Chris Walker Heaven gets another personal best and uh, not his favourite event. He used to be the 200, 100, and the 50 was the third. I suppose now he's doing the 100. The 50 has to be in there somewhere. Yeah, Chris seems to have stopped doing the 200 backstroke at the moment and concentrating more on the sprint event. We saw his 100 come on a couple of years ago and he, so he stopped doing the 200 to concentrate on that and unfortunately he missed that nomination time last night but that was a great 50 and a great PB for him. And one and two in terms of qualification times. Chris Walker, Hebben, and Liam Tanko. 25 2 0 plays 25 5 9. I think Liam will go quicker tomorrow night. Can Chris Walker, Hebben, though? Yeah, and I think Liam will be happy with that time for the, the evening. He hasn't had a great season, but he is getting back there now. Rory Lemons taking the last qualification place. Elwood, Ness, McGovern, Locker, and Patching, the other eight for the final tomorrow night. We'll look at the starting lineup for the 50 meters butterfly. Semi final number one. They are on their way out. Here they come. I'll give you the run, uh, the lineup before we actually see it on screen. Alan Hopkins of Blackburn, Alice Thomas of Swansea, Ellen Thomas of Guildford. Then we have three swimmers from Loughborough. Amy Smith, Emma Wilkins, Sophie Smith, Georgia Bunn, and Brianna Close of Manchester in sevens and eights. And here's a slightly more palatable way of looking at the one to eight than I just gave you. With Amy Smith back after her 53 earlier. And we'll see uh, Fran Halsall coming up in the second semi final, but Amy Smith is the uh, fastest qualified for this one in lane four. Amy, to me, looked a lot more comfortable in the 50 fly than she did in the 53. Yeah, both Amy and Fran both looked really strong this morning in the 50 butterfly. Amy's 53 wasn't what she wanted. 100 fly wasn't what she wanted. So the 50 is her main focus tonight. And she looked really strong. So hopefully she can go that through to the semi-finals. But, you know, she's been training really well. So it would be really good to see her have a great swim tonight. She did do a personal best in the heats this morning at 26.41. The other personal best was from Ellen Thomas of Guildford in lane number Three, but it is definitely Amy Smith who's uh, leading from the front. They're going to try and lead all the way through the wall. I don't think anybody's going to stop her or anybody's going to get even close to her here. This is going to be a nice, comfortable first place for Amy Smith. 26.84. Not quite as quick as this morning, but she did what she had to do in the semi finals. Ellen Thomas in second place, 27.28. That's a new personal best, two in a day for the Guildford swimmer. And Alice Thomas in third place. Yeah, that's a strong swim for Amy. It's not as fast as what she went this morning, but she has just had the 50. Restart. So she will be feeling a little bit tired from that. She won't have recovered properly yet. So now she's got the semi-final out of the way. She'll have the final tomorrow night. She needs to rest tonight, fuel up and get ready for that final. Confirmation of that result. Amy Smith, the winner, quite comfortably in the end, but almost half a second. But Ellen Thomas has improved on her time twice today. 27.28 is her new personal best. Alice Thomas in 27.46. All those three should qualify for the final tomorrow. And on to the second semi-final of the women's 50 metres butterfly. They're ready and poised for action. No red carpet treatments for the 50s. They kind of just usher them on. Don't they? The hundreds and the 200s get the other end of the ball and all the... Uh, the, the sort of glamour stuff that goes with it, all the, the, the pizzazz, and they just kind of issue them and like they're going to the public bar. So. Yeah, the 50s just get shoved at the other end, but you know, I'm sure Fran would love the red carpet to come out for the 50 freestyle and 50 butterfly. But you know, we've just seen her do a great performance in that 53, and she'll be buzzing from that, she'll be feeling positive, and fr that's how Fran swims well. If she's swimming well, she's on top of the world, and she will keep going. But if when she's disappointed with the swim, she does start to struggle slightly. So it's great that we saw her get that nomination time and she'll want to go in there for another strong performance. That's the lineup for you for the 50 butterfly. Scottish record holder Shan Harkin in five, the British record holder Fran Halsall in four. Shan Harkin will be looking for a 26.75. She wasn't uh, massively outside that this morning. That is the Scottish record. Fran Halsall will just will be looking for qualification time. She set in Barcelona is the British record. 25.69. Well, she was very positive, very direct, and uh, 
gave her all from the start. Did Fran Housel in the 53. I think she's doing likewise in the 50 fly. Yeah, she had a great start there, another world-class start for her. And it's so nice to see Fran swimming well. You know, she had a little bit of disappointment at the Olympics, so it's great to see her coming back and producing world-class swims. This looks like an angry swim for me, for Fran Housel. Come on, then. 25.88. Very angry and very, very impressive from Fran Housel. Second place to Rachel Kelly in 26.88. Uh, that is just a personal best by one one hundredth of a second, so two in a day for her as well. And Sean Harkin, 27.15, not quite the Scottish record, but I, I think there's quite a, a lot of built-up angst there from Fran Housel, the way she attacked. That's like, like I'm going to win, you're not going to win, Water. I'm going to get the better of you here. Yeah, she wanted to set a good swim there. That was quicker than this morning, so she'll be really pleased with how that is. Now she can just get ready for the final tomorrow evening. But she was disappointed with the 100 fly last night, so it's great to see her coming back really strong. Off come the goggles, on comes the smile, and here come the results. And confirmation that that Fran Housel at 25.88 is the best of the bunch. Rachel Kelly in second place, and Sean Harkin in third, and Emma Wilkins takes the last place of the eight for tomorrow, along with Thomas Matos, the other Thomas, Ellen Thomas, Sean Harkin, Amy Smith, and Rachel Kelly all back tomorrow for the final of the 50 fly. So you can't afford to look away for those uh, those 50 metres there, starting with a men's 50 backstroke. A lot of big names in there, good swims. Yeah, I think Chris had a really good swim. I think he'll probably want to still squeeze a bit more out of that. So yeah. Marco, you know, his PB is 25-0. So I'm sure he's looking to get round about that mark, I think, tomorrow. And the women's swim as well. Ra absolutely rapid. I know, yeah, she's just so far ahead in this event. And I think that tomorrow it is a bit of fun for her. But I think yeah. she's really going to enjoy that swim tomorrow. And it was, you know, great to see a bit of rivalry going on there as well. Seeing Amy and Fran and, and a few others going from, you know, one race to the next tonight is must be pretty tiring. Yeah, well, I think um, it's quite an interesting year. I've never really noticed this many swimmers doing so many different events, events that they're not known for. So we've got backstrokers doing freestyle, we've got freestylers doing butterfly. So, yeah, it's been quite an interesting uh, meet so far, and we're only on day three. And why do you think that is? Is that swimmers testing out the swims that they think that they'd like to continue to specialise in? Yeah. Or just to, for the sake of it? Well, this is um, it's a, a trial year, basically. You know, we're, we're two years out of the Olympic Games, so if anybody has anything they need to kind of work on, they need to trial out. This is the year to trial that kind of stuff out. Okay, and now carry on. Have you had any questions in on the Twitter? We have had a question in on the Twitter. We've had someone something from James Edmonds, and he says, um, sorry, I'm referring to my phone, is uh, is pool swimming the hardest sport in the world? Open water swimming is easy because you get a draft. <gasps> I think that's a bit of a controversial question. Carry on. I know. Well, I've never had a black eye from swimming in the pool, but I've had about six black eyes from swimming uh, in the open water. Six so black eyes. At least you elaborate six, on this. Not. I was actually punched by a boy once. Believe it or not, which was Goodness quite annoying. Um, a French boy. Needless to say, he scarpered before I got out of the water. Um, yeah, I mean, open water swimming is pretty much like water polo, but swimming, swimming around, if you know what I mean, for 10,000 meters, as opposed to, you know, a 50s like we've just seen. <laughs> the splash and dash. <laughs> so, black eyes, any other injuries that you've occurred from open water swimming? Oh, Not yeah. Not we're trying to put people oh, off, no, obviously, no. but, you know. Yeah, loads. I mean, uh, all, the, the, all the scars that you can see on my hands are from, are from open water swims, um, you know, swam over black eyes. But, you know, it's all, it's all part and parcel of, of having a pretty good story to tell, I think. <laughs> and you, you said that in your last event, you had to kind of swim outwards a little bit rather than down the middle because people were swimming... All over the top of you. All over the top of you. Yeah, absolutely. So I would disagree with that tweet and say that Swimming open water is a little harder than swimming in the pool. And jellyfish stings? Yeah, all of it, you know, all of that kind of stuff is, is involved. But before we go, I uh, wanted to say that we also had another tweet from someone called Andrew Creelman. Oh, Maybe Andrew a relation, Creelman, that would be, yes, that's my that brother. he's watching from Brazil, yes, which is yep. amazing. Yep. And basically, can you give him a shout? He's watched every night so far. Oh, bless it. We're making sound really <laughs> sad, don't we? He's sat in his room in Brazil. But yeah, he does live in, in Sao Paulo. And it was your birthday yesterday, Andrew, so happy birthday from myself. Oh. And Kerry Ann Payne. I think he probably wanted you to give him a shout out more than me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, any other tweets, Kerry Ann, that have come in? Um, no, that's pretty much just it for now um, at the moment. But, so, keep your questions coming in, though. We'd love to hear your questions, where you are, what you're doing. Definitely, indeed. Now, we've uh, got the scene slightly earlier about the, the medal presentation. Um, so, we'll, we'll come to those very, very shortly. Um, but, Kerry Ann, great swim so far tonight. Yeah, it's been really great. We've still got, you know, quite a lot of swims to do uh, this evening. So, we've still got, you know,
know, um, to see a few guys, a few of the big names we've got, Adam Peaty coming up, which I really can't wait to see. I am going to be shouting, and I probably am going to be really flustered when we come back to studio. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Okay, now let's take a look now for the gold medalist for the 200 metres breaststroke. Kerry Ann standing on that podium. Must be such a good feeling after such a good swim. Yes, she must just be so pleased. She seemed so happy in that post race interview. She doesn't look all that happy just there, but I know that she <laughs> oh, is there happy we go. inside. There's a smile. I think Molly looks a little upset. She was kind of hoping, to, uh, I'm sure, for a, a bit of a quicker time to get under that nomination time. But, um, you know, great swim. And, and I think what we talked about earlier was that if one of the girls can do a really good PB, the other one is going to be fighting to do another PB. And before you know it, we've got two more female versions of Michael Jameson. Indeed. So we'll, we'll backtrack everything that we said about the <laughs> 200 breaststroke and the women's field, uh, particularly purely because of the great up and coming swimmers. We've got three ladies there. Yeah. That are, we're going to see great things from them, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. And we're just going to keep going. They're just going to keep trying to outdo each other because they seem like really competitive girls. And they're just going to keep getting better and better and better. And that's what you need, isn't it? A rival um, in, in each yeah. event. Uh, I know we've got swimmers that are doing multi events yeah. this weekend, but it's always good to have that one person that you're up against, that one person that's not only going to push you to the finish, but give you that extra drive to make sure that you win. Yeah, well, I think that really competitive side of things is really important, but at the same time, you still want to be friends outside. You know, yeah. when you go to major meets, your teammates are your friends. You know, you're not going to be friends with who are, who are the people who are racing you in the call room. It's all going to be quite anxious and, you know, everybody's going to be a bit nervous. But in the call room, you know, you're just going to have to concentrate on yourself. So, yes, it's about having that rivalry. But outside yeah. of the swimming pool, you know, the British swimming team, I would say, we're a really close team. And, um, you know, we all just really want everybody to do well, apart yeah. from when you're in the race racing someone else. <laughs> when you want to win. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, uh, speaking to Joe Jackson earlier, and she was saying she likes to have that banter in the call room because she said, you yeah. know, she does get nervous or she used to get nervous when she was competing. Yeah. But she liked that element of the sport, that she knew people in the call room and she could have a bit of a chat with them before to calm her down. Yeah, no, it's really great. I mean, having somebody that you, you can experience it with really yeah so a lot of the swimmers you know we spend so much time with these people that it's really nice that we have great friendships but that's still the same rivalry that you have with everybody um, when you're in the call room and then when you go out to race okay so when you go out to race indeed let's move on now for the semi-final the first semi-final of the men's 100 meters freestyle before we get into the lineup, a uh, quick mention for Dave Hemmings, who's moved from Hillingdon to Loughborough to be James Gibson's number two. And I know that uh, all those at Hillingdon want well, to thank Dave for all his efforts over the years. Adam Warner has sent me a tweet to that effect. And Dave is standing in the uh, coaching pen at the moment, uh, looking on at the 100 freestyle semi final number one. And that is the lineup. Callum Brown and James Disney May were side by side this morning. And they are side by side again in the first semi final, both based in America. Adam arrived earlier this week. I think James probably likewise is in lane number five. It should be between them. But watch out for Callum Jarvis, because I think the Wales record could go here. 50.09 is the Wales record. He holds it. I think he's going to beat that tonight. Yeah, Callum had a great 200 freestyle last night, so this 100 should be great for him. But for me, James Disney May this morning looked amazing to the first 50. And to me, it looked like he backed off a little bit with 25 to go. So I think we should watch out for him to have a really strong swim. Simon Burnett holds the British record and the English record at 48.20. That was set in Beijing time. That went. It's a six-year-old record. Adam Brown is capable of doing it. So too is James Disney May, but look at the far side. Grant Gibbons, uh, Craig Gibbons and Grant Quigley have gone off to a very, very good start, but it is Adam Brown in the centre lane. 23.42, James Disney May, 23.68. So it's just about a uh, quarter of a second between one and two at the turn. Yeah, and Richard Schaefer's as well was third there at the turn, so it's going to be a really tight finish, but you can see Adam Brown starting to pull away, and he looks really strong down this final 10 metres. Adam's best time, 48.48. Can he get close to that? Can Callum Jarvis get close to here Scottish record 49 by 4 so the Welsh record has gone the Welsh record has gone at 49.54 because Callum Jarvis has just won it with Adam Brown in second James Disney May in third so 1, 2, 3 all sub 50 but that is a big chunk out of the Wales record Callum Jarvis well done we predicted it he delivered it yeah he's just taken 0.5 off his personal best so that's a great chunk off his PB for Callum Jarvis what a great so you can see him finishing really strong with his final 
final five, head down and he gets his hand to the wall first and he will be really pleased with that swim. And that's looking really good for the four by one for Commonwealth Games, getting those boys in the mid 49 points. Yeah, still a bit of room to uh, improve though. Want to be in the 48s boys. 49 probably doesn't quite cut it at the moment, but uh, that's all right. It's good, it's solid, and it is a new Wales record for Callum Jarvis. 49.54, Adam Brown in second, just one one hundredths between Brown and James Disney May. Okay, second semi-final. A certain Grant Turner is in lane number three. The future husband of Joe Jackson. What's it going to be like for you watching him in this second semi-final? I'm really looking forward to watching Grant swim. He's had a great season coming up to this meet. But I get more nervous for watching him swim than I used to swim. I was quite chilled out and relaxed. But when Grant gets in and swims, I get so, so nervous. And there we go. We can see him now with the great Loughborough top on with the, uh, the gold shiny stuff on it. Looking very smart the nice pink shorts uh, looking very smart in there but you know he's just going to go in there and give it his best but you know my heart is beating slightly bit bit nervous right now here's the rest of the lineup it's not all about mr turner it's it could not. be it could be Definitely all about mr isn't. proud actually can it lane four ben proud the fastest qualifier from this morning looking for his personal best of 48.48 is that right 49.48 that's correct 49.48 check the pecs make sure they're working Everything seems to have worked pretty well for Ben so far this week. Nice to settle. Getting to be a pro already is Ben Proud, keeping everybody just waiting on their tenter hooks. And he gets into his stroke, as does Adam Barrett alongside him. And how is the future Mr. Jackson looking here in these stages? Oh, I'm the future Mrs. Turner, I'm afraid. I'm taking his <laughs> name. But, you know, he's gone out really strong. But you need to remember Adam Barrett as well. He trains with Grant in Loughborough in the sprint squad with James Gibson. So I know Adam's had a great season leading up to this as well. So, you know, the 100 is such a tight finish. And, you know, they're just going really strong at the moment and it is neck and neck between the fields centre lanes nothing much to choose between them Adam Barrett in five Ben Brown in four and Grant's having a pretty good swim as well remember it is the uh, top eight times that will go through progress to tomorrow's final it's going to be Ben Brown who's going to get it 49.69 just a little bit slower than he went this morning second place to Adam Barrett and Grant Turner 50.19 is that going to be enough Joe for him to progress to the final tomorrow night I hope so we haven't seen the final results yet but you know, I know that he really wants to go a 49 low at this competition, so I hope that he has got through to the final so he can progress through that time. You know, I know he might be a little bit disappointed with that, but, you know, as a swimmer, you do go through disappointments. You just need to forget about it and move on to the next race. We'll tell you when it revolves on the board. That's the finish of the race. This is how that one went. And, uh, yes, he has made it in sixth place is Grant Phew. Turner. Yeah, who? <laughs> That's a relief, especially for tomorrow night. Grant Turner finishing third in that so finally good enough for sixth overall Ben Proud 49.69 and Adam Barrett similarly going sub 50 for the 49.88 Jack Scott in fourth place So I can tell you there is a no, not with a swim off. There's two joint sevenths, uh, 50.27, so they won't have to be a swim off. We're going to have one of those a bit later on. But Carl Morgan is the man who misses out 50.32. So Callum Jarvis, fastest, Ben Proud, Adam Brown, James Disney May, Adam Barrett, Grant Turner, and Craig Gibbons. Jack Scott are the eight who will return tomorrow for the final. Yeah, and that was a great swim for Callum. Like I said, he had a great 200 the other night, so he is feeling very positive. And I think he's going to have a really strong swim tomorrow tomorrow night and he could be the one to watch yeah, certainly with that new Wales record, good to see that on the board, good to see the 100 backstroke down. This will be an amazingly competitive race, I tell you, there are four here who could win it. Three, four, five and six, I would not know where to put my money on right now, but the fastest and nearest to the one minute mark was Lauren Quigley. Now she surely will go sub one minute tonight. Yeah, I think my money's on lane four and five. Elizabeth Simmons is swimming really well, but her main event is the 200 that's going to come later on in the week. So this is a bit of a warm up for her, but Lauren Quigley
Quigley and Georgia Davies are the two to me that you're going to need to watch. Georgia is such a good sprinter. She gets out there in the 50, but Lauren brings it back so strong. Lauren had a great year last year. She's one of the up-and-coming swimmers, and she could be the one to watch in this 100 backstroke. Well, Lauren Quigley's time this morning of 1-0-0-0-1 was the seventh fastest in the world. Only so far, five swimmers in the world have gone sub-60. So we might get a couple in here to join that elite. Georgia Davis is a swimmer who has been sub one minute. She's on a 59.60. And uh, the world's record is 59.60, and that is hers. Scottish record held by Charlotte McKenzie, who's not in this lineup. And Gemma Swafford, of course, now retired, set that British record in the old suit days of 58.12 when everybody broke world records in Rome, it seemed, yeah. back in 2009. Yeah, it seems a long time ago now that Spoff broke that uh, British record and the world record in the same race. But Lauren hasn't gone under the 60 point yet, and it'd be great to see her break that barrier. That's the aim for these backstrokers to break 60 points. So if she can do that, that'll be a great swim for her. OK, I want your bet before this start. How many are going to go sub 60 here? My bet is there's going to be two swimmers under 60 points. I'll go three. There you are. Being ambitious. Do, do we have money on this? Yeah, not really. I think it's just a sportsman's bet, but uh, we'll see. I, I think there are three capable of going sub one minute here. Certainly, Lauren Quigley was very close to it this morning in lane four. Georgia Davis has done it already in five, as has Lizzie Simmons. And Jessica Fuller Love is just outside the minute barrier. 10048. If all of them improve on what they did this morning, we will see maybe four go sub one minute. I think three. Joe thinks two. How's it looking as they come to 50? The split time is 20. 8.88. Well, they're under 29, so that means they're on course for a sub one minute. Well, certainly the leader, Georgia Davis, is anyway. Yeah, that was a great first 50 for Georgia Davis, and Georgia's got great underwater work, and you can see her looking really strong, but Simo is on her shoulder at the moment, and Elizabeth always finishes really strong. She's a 200, so, you know, Elizabeth's looking great, but don't count off Lauren Quigley yet, because she has a great finish. Lauren Quigley coming back in lane four. Georgia Davis has it at the moment. She might have it all the way to the wall. Georgia Davis is just going to hold off the attentions of Lauren Quigley and we have just the one go sub one minute and neither of us will ride on that one. 59.78 for Georgia Davis, not too far outside that Wales record of 59.60. Lauren Quigley could not back up her 10001 this morning. She just finished in second place. Lizzie Simmons 10060. That time of Georgia Davis puts her in just quick calculation. Second in the world, is that right? Am I right? Yeah. Yes, second, second in, in the, the world. world this year. So great swim there for Georgia, who's at Loughborough University with James Gibson at the moment. So she'll be really pleased with that swim. Lauren Quigley, unfortunately, didn't break the 60 barrier, but that is still a strong performance for her, and she's the top English swimmer there. So Georgia Davis is already going to the Commonwealth Games for Wales, so Lauren will hopefully get that individual, uh, the relay swim. Not only second in the world, but uh, second in the Commonwealth now, because Emily Seaboom to 58.92. Belinda Hocking, 59.83. Uh, that's good. Very, very good from uh, Georgia. And she will have Glasgow on her mind, will Georgia, later on in the year for the Commonwealth Games. Lauren Quigley will improve. Lizzie Simmons just working her way back into competition. 60.60. .60. And uh, still to come, very shortly, we'll have the uh, men's 100 metres breaststroke. But before we do all that, let's hear from the number two in the world in the 100 backstroke. Here is Georgia Davis. Georgia, a wonderful swim from you there. You really brought it home down that final 50 metres. Tell us how you feel about that race. Um, I'm a little out of breath, but um, I'm really pleased to have gone under the minute. I think that's the second quickest time I've ever done, so I guess that like, like, means that I'm in good condition, ready for Commonwealths. And you're, you came into this meet already pre-qualified for Team Wales. Did that take the pressure off coming into that race? Um, it definitely takes the pressure off, but I always put a lot of pressure on myself anyway because I always want to do good times and I'm always comparing myself to previous swims and other people. So um, I still felt nervous coming into this. Well, you certainly didn't look it. Ladies and gentlemen, your British champion in the 100 metres backstroke. Well done, Now, before we head into the men's 100 meter breaststroke final, where we'll have Adam Peaty swimming, earlier I caught up with his coach, Melian Marshall, on what life is like as a swimming coach. 
Mal Marshall, who is the head coach of the City of Derby Swimming Club. So Mal, talk to me a little bit about your day as a coach. So my day starts at half past four in the morning and then I get in my car and I get the uh, pool ready and open for 30 swimmers to dive in at five in the morning. Um, and then I'll go home, they'll finish around seven, they'll head off to school, I'll head back and go and do some admin, some planning, some organising and then I'll be back at the pool later for kind of 4.30, 5 o'clock and then we'll be coaching again up until half past nine at night with various groups. Wow, it sounds like a really busy day. It's a long day. What's the hardest part of that day? Um, getting up at 4.30, not easy, <laughs> especially not when you've been at, in, in bed at 10 o'clock, working till 10 o'clock the night before. So 4.30 is not the easiest time to get in the morning. It's the middle of the night, let's be honest. So in Derby, you run predominantly an age group programme. When you have a youngster, how do you nurture them into being a great senior? And I think it's just taking your time with the athletes. Um, everyone grow, develops at different times and it's about looking all the time about the long term. In a club programme, your job and full priority is to get to the, those athletes to 18 and still be interested and still looking to move it on. And so that's my job in the, in the club programme and anybody we see that, you know, really, really is looking like they've got a large amount of talent and we, you know, like with everybody, we just try and do the best for, that we can for them. So tonight we have the 100 breaststroke and you have Adam PT in that. Is that what you did with him as a youngster? Um, yeah, definitely a lot of nurturing going on with Adam. You know, I've coached him since he was 14. Um, and yeah, just like I do with all my athletes, just try and give them what they need and the best that I can give them. And, and that's been, you know, when you've got the right talent, then that formula, formula works. So at your swimming club back at home, how many people does Adam PT roughly swim with? Um, depends, because we have got him on a different program 50% of the week, so he trains with just four other senior guys. Um, but then sometimes he can be in a, in a pool with 33 swimmers. Um, but I think that's good for him. It makes him keeps him humble. It's only a recovery session for him. It means he's not at the forefront and all the focus all the time. So, you know, we try and get the balance right for him. And back to you again, so you were talking about it's a, a young pro programme predominantly, so how many swimmers do you have to look after on a weekly basis? Um, well, I oversee 250, 260 swimmers, mm. um, we've got 10 staff, um, but my, my main group's kind of 33 swimmers that I deal with most of the time, but I, you know, I spend time with the other groups because that's important as well. Great, well thank you very much Mel, and we are really looking forward to seeing Adam Peter swim in the 100 breaststroke final tonight. <laughs> That is the one to wait. Not all about Adam Beatty, of course. Ross Murdoch's in there. Michael Jameson's in there as well. Not often we'd be overshadowing and overlooking Michael Jameson, but I think on this occasion Adam Beatty is the man to watch. Ross Murdoch has been quicker than Adam this year. 59.75 for Ross. 59.83 for Adam Beatty. Is the British record holder Dan Stawinski about to lose his British record? 59.55 is that British record. Fastest time in the world. Probably not going to hit that. Christian Sprenger at 58.87. Cameron van der Berg, second fastest in the world, 59.50. Adam Peaty, go for it. Yeah, and Adam's had a great start, but so is Ross Murdoch in lane number five. I've been really looking forward to this swim. You know, we've spoken a lot to Mel about Adam, and he is one to look out for for the future. And if he can get this nomination tag, that would be brilliant for him going into the Commonwealth Games. I think the Scottish record's going to go here as well. 59.89, Michael Jameson holds it. Ross Murdoch, 27.774. Obviously, 59.75 is the new Scottish record held by Ross Murdoch. He broke that last week. Now, they're going head-to-head. Beatty -head. closest to us in lane four. Murdoch in lane five. Beatty is strong, strong, very strong in lane 25. He is. He's looking really strong, but so is Ross Murdoch. Ross Murdoch does look like he's pulling away from Adam, and this is going to be a great swim for both of these boys if they can finish strong. This is going to be quick. This is going to be fast. This is going to be Ross Murdoch who's going to get there first. 59.56, it is a new Scottish record for Ross Murdoch, Adam Peaty 59.79, he has gone sub one minute as well, new personal best for him, that's a great head to head and one we're going to say a lot more in years to come, third place by the way Michael Jameson 1-0-0-53, but Murdoch, everybody talking about Peaty, Ross Murdoch says you've forgotten about me at your peril, I'm going to go on and win this and he wins it in the end by 23 one hundredths of a second. That was a brilliant swim for both those boys. Ross Murdoch was 0 0.1 off the British record, which was set in 2009. So that was a great swim for him, but a great swim for Adam Peach as well. First time going 59.79, a PB for both of those boys, which is great to see, and we can see how happy they are. Yes, Ross. Yes, Ross. That is the third fastest time in the world for Ross Murdoch. 
59.56. Adam Beatty, 59.79. Then Jameson and Wilby. And the Welsh Rocket holder, uh, Rob Holderness, 101.14. 100.99 is his Welsh record. So he wasn't too far outside that, but well done, Ross Murdoch. Let's hear from him now. Smiles all over his face. He's with Jody. Ross, what a performance. You dominated last week in the 50 and the 100 at the Scottish Nationals, and you've just backed it up today against a world-class field. Uh, words can't really describe how I'm feeling. I struggled a bit last night with 100, so I wasn't too sure where I was at after last week. Thought I might be feeling it a bit, but I just went out there, put all my heart into it, and I just, you know, it paid off. Scottish breaststroke is on a real high at the moment. It must be a very special time for you, knowing you've got the Home Commonwealth Games this summer. Yeah, you know, the, the talent coming through Scotland and Britain as well is massive. We've got such a big depth. Uh, so it's looking as if it's going to be a great Commonwealth Games for Scotland and England. Glasgow, give it up for your 100 metre breaststroke British champion. British champion indeed. What a swim. Now, Kerry Ann, you were back up again. <laughs> <laughs> I had to quickly tell you to come back and sit down. Oh, just such a fantastic swim. I know that we were talking about Adam Peaty quite a lot, but Ross Murdoch, I mean, he swam last week in the Scottish Nationals. He did a fantastic job there. So for him to come back and to, to do such a great swim today after he said himself he didn't have a great swim last night was absolutely amazing. But, you know, Adam Peaty also went at PB as well. But to be so close to that British record, he was zero. 0.01, 1 hundredth of a second off that British record is just outstanding. Now, Mel, as you were speaking to um, Adam's coach Mel earlier on, she must be happy with that as well because that was so close. They were fighting right yeah. to the end. I think that Adam will be happy with the time because, you know, he did a PB, but he'll be absolutely gutted that he was second in that race and he'll be fighting to try and get that British record before Ross does. So, lots of great action so far this evening. Can you pick out a favourite swim so far? I can't even think, it just my mind has completely <laughs> lost me. But actually, that probably for me will be the, the outstanding breakthrough swim of the meet was that swim being so close to the British record. It's just outstanding. Indeed. Well, listen, that was great. And we're going to move on now for the junior uh, finals as well. It's the women's junior 100 metre backstroke final. Just want to make a quick correction something I said earlier on as we look at the starting lineup for the 100 backstroke for women. Uh, Dave Hemmings, who I mentioned earlier on, has moved from Hennington to Loughborough. Will be Kev Renshaw as number two, not James Gibbs as number two. I was given false information by somebody. I will not say who that person is, but it is Kev Renshaw as number two and not James Gibbs as number two. They are. Thank you, Kev. She's not very well at the moment, so we want you to get better soon. Yeah, no, I saw Kev the other day. It was great to see him, but definitely get well soon. His wife's going to be having a baby soon, which is fantastic news, so it'll be great to see him um, when we get back to Loughborough. So the junior 100 metres backstroke final has Laura Stevens of Plymouth in one, Hannah Jones of Stockport in two, Karen Reid of South Ayrshire three, Brittany Horton of City of Birmingham in four, Chloe Golding of Ellesmere in five, Eleanor Baldwin of Derby in six, Danielle Baker of Plymouth in seven, and Rosie Rudin of Nova Centurion in lane eight. Fastest qualifier then, Brittany Horton did a personal best of 102.65 a little while ago. She did 103 this morning, looking for a season's best and obviously looking to go on and win this. This is a very, very even breaking value. You could pretty much string a line of uh, washing across eight to one and it would hold in place. Yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a really close race. As we saw this morning, the girls going 60 three high, 64 low, so I think it's going to be a really, really tight race but turning at first was Brittany Horton from Birmingham in a 30.6 so great first 50, she just needs to keep that going through that final 25 metres Anybody probably could still win this, there's certainly three or four very much in contention, lane four is Brittany Horton right alongside her is Chloe Golding, they are stroke for stroke, coming back into the mix is Karen Reed of South Ayrshire as well but Brittany Horton has it by about half a body length over Chloe Golden, it's going to be Brittany Horton. Can she get inside 102? She's looking at that just outside 102.95 for her second Chloe Golding of Ellesmere, and third is Eleanor Baldwin of City of Derby in 
104.13. Let me a quick check and see whether Eleanor has actually done a PB on that. She has. She has done a PB on that. So uh, maybe a slight disappointment for Mel Marshall of the second Van and PT, although it was a great swim and a good new PB. She got another PB from another of her talented swimmers. Yeah, great swim there for Eleanor. I was recently out in Zambia with the uh, Derby group on a training camp, and they had a really great camp. So it's great to see the Derby swimmers doing really well. But that was great swim for those top three girls. A little bit outside their personal best, but still strong swims for them. That's the fishing lineup then. Brittany Horton going sub 103, 102.95. Then Chloe Golding and Eleanor Baldwin in third place. That's the face of the winner. Good victory for her. Coming up next, we have the junior 100 breaststroke final. We thought the uh, men's was pretty exciting earlier. It was very exciting indeed. Well, there's another tier of junior breaststrokers coming behind. We have breaststrokers, as far as the eye can see in this country right now, who are all doing very, very good times. Yeah, it's great to see all the junior swimmers here. You know, this is where it starts. They get to swim in the Commonwealth Games. Because obviously, these won't be going to the Commonwealth, so it's great that they get to experience the atmosphere here. And it's such a fantastic pool. It's been redone for the Commonwealth, and it looks brilliant. It looks a great pool to swim in, and I wish I was swimming in there. So, you know, it looks great. So they should take this experience, you know, the crowd behind them, and they should produce really fast swims off this. Another shout out to the Woking Posse who've been uh, following events here and uh, tweeting quite regularly to me. Dominic Holloway is going for them in lane number six. Full lineup. Kevin Wallback at Aventio in one. Marcus Gardner of Western Supermare in three. That's Harry Ackland of Plymouth coming on to Paul's side in lane number three. Paul will be Joshua Winnicott of City of Birmingham. Charlie Atwood of Taunton Dean in five. Dominic Holloway of Working in six. Daniel Lim of Warrender in seven. And Michael Esnouf of Abingdon in lane number eight. Which of these uh, talented juniors are going to step up and become the Ross Murdoch, Adam Peaty, Michael Jameson, Andrew Willis of the future? We know about the pedigree in Britain of uh, male breaststroking. Goes right back to David Wilkie, then Duncan Goodhue, and then Adrian Morehouse, and then Nick Gillingham. And then we had uh, four world-class breaststrokers in the 90-stroke 2000s. We had uh, Adam Whitehead, we had James Gibson, we had Darren Mew. Yeah, we've had a lot of breaststrokers, a lot of world-class breaststrokers. And, you know, they've, they've just seen two boys break the 60 points, so they should take the inspiration from that, and they should want to get in there and produce great swims. Start of the junior 100 metres breaststroke final. Let's see who can get in and around that one minute. Obviously, we're not expecting anybody to break the minute here, not in the juniors, but uh, sizable chunks out of the PB would be very, very nice indeed. And some very, very nice strokes indeed. Watching uh, down below us, Charlie Atwood of Taunton Dean's had a pretty good start. And on the far side, also Daniel Limber, Warren de Bars. Yeah, and Joshua Winnicott in lane number four has had a great start as well. He's looking really powerful down that first 50. And he turned first in a 29.90, so he's the only swimmer in this field to break the 30 point on that first 50. So hopefully he can keep that on and to get a personal best in his race. Well, he did a personal best this morning of 105.04 the Birmingham swimmer and Leyland before, but they're coming to join him. They want to get involved in his party. Harry Ackland is having a really good second half of the swim, and Ackland might have taken over here just ahead of Joshua Winnaker. Not much between those two, or indeed Charlie Atwood, who is coming back strongly, but the Plymouth swimmer is going to take this one in lane number three. It's going to be Harry Ackland in 103.79. That is a new personal best for him. An improvement of 7.100. Second place to Charlie Atwood, and third going to Joshua Joshua Winnicott, so another great swim by another potentially great Plymouth swimmer. Yeah, we can see their finish here. They've got five metres to go, and breaststroke and butterfly is all on the touch. They've just got to put their head down, and he had a great finish. He came from nowhere in that last five metres, and that was a great swim for him. 103.79 is a personal best, so he'll be really pleased that you can see him punch in the air when he finishes, so that's a great swim for Plymouth, Leander. Swimmer. Timed it to perfection, very happy. Raises the Plymouth cap to the Plymouth supporters on the far side. 103.79 the winning time. Atwood in second and Joshua Winnicott coming in in the bronze medal position. 104.58. personal best 
after personal bests. I must admit I completely lost count tonight of how many people that won the race did personal bests. I know that lots of people in the races yeah. did personal bests, but completely lost count of that. <laughs> Just such a great night. Again, you know, really world, world class swimming. So for me, the absolute highlight has to be Ross Murdoch in that, yeah. in that 100 breaststroke. I mean, so be so close to that British record and he knows he can do it. He has the taste for it now. So, you know, it's about confidence. He's been under the minute point now many, many times. So now it's a case of trying to be under that British record. And do you think tonight is a turning point for him in terms of, like you say, to build that confidence, to move forwards and have that confidence to go that little bit faster? Yeah, I think that he definitely will be trying to go a lot faster on that race. And, you know, he's done it now. He's going to the Commonwealth Games with the Scotland team and he will be aiming to beat that British record at the Commonwealth Games. But not only that, he'll be trying to win that 100 breaststroke at the Commonwealth Games with a world-class time like that. I think he can. And we said earlier that we had 13 nomination times earlier. Uh, have we tallied it up even further, which we know that we have, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my rough calculations is that we've had another four individual uh, okay. nomination times, so that brings it up to about 16 people that have qualified. Okay. And then on top of that, we then get to add in possibly the men's 4x100 relay team. So I couldn't work out that qualification time, I'm afraid, <laughs> in my head. <laughs> so it could be potentially another... Uh, 20 people or 20 people at the moment under the nomination times for different events which is great absolutely great on only day three as well now we've got loads of action tomorrow which we'll talk about shortly but you may have heard that joe jackson has been filling in on the commentary role for ross davenport that's because tomorrow ross is going to compete in the london marathon uh, which is quite remarkable he's gone from the pool <laughs> to the running which <laughs> you had a bit of banter with him earlier on about that but let's take a look at ross's journey So Ross Davenport, amazing commentary this week, but that's not what we're here to talk about, is it? Something to do with two marathons in a week. Are you absolutely crazy? No, I'm not crazy. <laughs> not crazy one bit. Um, I did the marathon last week in Paris, and I'll be travelling down to London tomorrow to do the London Marathon on Sunday, straight back up to do the commentary on Monday morning. But Ross, you're a swimmer. You're not a runner. You, you didn't even do running when you were swimming. Why are you doing two marathons in yeah, one week? As a talented swimmer. So that means I'm a talented <laughs> runner. I'm not sure if it works that way. You spent 90% of your time as a swimmer horizontal, and now you're expecting to run. What What is that all about? I can run. I can do it. I can do it. You know, you, you do the marathon swimming, which is obviously a lot easier than actually doing the marathon run. Um, but, you know, two in a week. Oh, you, know, you might you and that <laughs> might not be able to do it, two mar marathon swims. I could swims. do two marathons. Right. Have That's you done it? it? I have done two marathons in a week, yes, of course I have. I'm hard. Yeah, but a marathon in swimming is only 10k, where a marathon in running is 26.2 yeah, miles. Yeah, it takes two, two hours of swimming, absolutely max. Running, you can have a little walk, you can have a little stop, you can have some drinks. Are you going to do it in two hours then? You go on your back. Are you going to do your marathon in no, two I'll hours? No, it'll be a bit lot longer. It'll be a lot longer running. <laughs> it's a lot harder being a marathon runner than a marathon swimmer, I tell you. I bet you could even do a marathon I swimmer. I always feel like I need I to disagree. pull you two apart. Now, listen, Ross, how can we vote? How can we uh, sponsor you any money towards this event? So we're raising money for children with cancer. And and we have a Virgin Money account, which is called Deranged Davenport. So if you just go on there and Google it and search for it, that is the, the website. And any money that is donated will be going to Children with Cancer, which is a great cause. It is indeed. And a, a cause close to your heart you mentioned earlier as well. Yeah, that's right. We've been affected. Uh, I think most people have been affected by cancer. And having a young daughter six months ago, you know, it, it just shows you that, you know, kids also can have, have cancer. And it's a, a terrible disease. And if anything was to happen to, to my daughter, it would be you know, devastating. I'd, I'd love somebody else out there to, to raise money on her behalf. So that's why we're doing it. We're hoping to, to eradicate this disease from, from everybody. Well, good luck with the marathon on Sunday. We'll be rooting for you. I yeah. think we'll maybe set up a bit of a race for you two after as well. <laughs> Just see who's really that hard. But good luck with it, Ross. Thank you. Thank you very much. So a moment ago, we saw the victory ceremony for the women's 100 metre backstroke. A bit aggressive there between the two of you. I thought I was going to have to intervene. Uh, but yeah, the victory ceremony there at Georgia Davies. She just looks so happy. Um, she's already been pre-selected for the Welsh team from the World Championships last year. So she didn't need to rest for this competition. Um, I think I suspect that she had a little bit of a rest. So, you know, just to freshen up maybe a week or two. Um, so for her to go is such a great time on such a short bit of rest, you know, it's looking great for the Commonwealth Games. Absolutely great for the Commonwealth Games. Can't wait to, to see how she progresses with that and see how, how the field kind of is generated to, to go that bit quicker next time as well from, from those swims. Yeah, well, it's kind of, you know, we have the Welsh and we have um, the English girls there, you know, so they'll be fighting each other to try and see who can be on the podium at the Commonwealth Games. 
and uh, we also saw the uh, the men's 100 breaststroke presentation as well. Even further, you know, off your seat, shouting and screaming, <laughs> carry on. You loved this race tonight, didn't you? I did. I mean, this race has so much. It holds so much for me. It's such an exciting race. You know, we have these boys doing absolutely world-class times. And, you know, we were talking a lot about Adam earlier, but, you know, I, I did forget to mention Ross, who just absolutely blew everybody out of the water in that race. It was fantastic to see. And Michael Jameson there as well, you yeah. know, ha having a, a good little smile on the podium. It's funny because <laughs> we've there. mentioned the other two, but we, we didn't mention, obviously, Michael Jameson. Still yes, a, a, a great absolutely. swim there as well. So that's all the action for this evening. I'm sure you've had just as good a time as what we have had in the studio here. So tomorrow morning, 5 to 9, we'll be here for more live action for the heats, which is going to be a good one tomorrow. Yes. So we're going to be here bright and early. So we'll see you tomorrow morning at 5 to 9 here on the live stream for the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014.